Oh, all right, guys. Uh, I wanted to pick up a big one off the shelf for us to build up today. And this is, of course, a new recently released frame arms kit. Uh, here, this is the GDAO SAF Custom. So it's sort of like a custom version of the GDAO, which had a couple of different forms out in the past previously, which I didn't really like. This one, though, I do really like the form of this one. So it definitely has this Special Forces look to it, with it being sort of like all gray. And actually, the all gray color scheme of this and like the white uh, highlight bits and things, the color scheme really reminds me a lot of the Zeta Plus, actually. And so just the design of it just kind of gives me the same kind of Zeta Plus sort of feel. The giant cannon rifle thing that it has, though, definitely gives me more of like a Rezzle type of uh, cannon feel for that. But it's a really super cool design, so I'm really excited to check it out. As you guys can see, it's got the big style frame arms box art here, which looks amazing, looks really super cool. On the ends of the box here, you'll notice this is number 49 in the frame arms line, and it also looks like they've changed up their logo for the frame arms a little bit. It looks slightly different from how it did before, so that's kind of interesting. On the bottom of the box here, you just got a front and back image of what the kit is going to look like, all built and painted up like that. Again, really super cool design. I love the just gray color scheme for it, it looks really nice. And then some action posing there, and then you can see how you can also build this up with a little bit different head and different equipment there. I think that's probably just built up using some leftover parts in here from just the previous version of the GDAO. And it's just showing off the special features of how you can, of course, mix and match parts just with different hard points around on the kits. That's a pretty standard to frame arms. And then on the top of the box, we've got just a look at all the option parts here. So you are going to have a lot of option parts. And again, I'm sure there's going to be other leftover parts on the runners and things like that that you'll have maybe more than what is, show, is shown here. And the action should have some pretty nice articulation. Again, that's pretty standard for a frame arms kit. And then the unpainted sample, there you can see what it looks like completely unpainted. And it, it looks pretty much the same. I mean, all the color placement is pretty much there. You're just missing, of course, like the nice shading and lining that you've got on this, on like the painted sample. And over there, you can see the list price for this is 5,400 yen for the list price. Pretty standard, again, not too bad. It's about the size, about the standard price for like a master grade. And that's kind of essentially what we've got here with this. So it kind of fits. But enough with that, let's open up the box. And yeah, even though this is a pretty large size box, you'll notice that there's actually some quite a lot of empty space in here. So I think like it could have fit into like the smaller size box was just like a kind of deeper one. But anyway, whatever the case, you've got your standard frame in here for the architect frame, it looks like, and then all of the new armor parts and everything on that. So let's dive into it, shall we? So we've got 11 bags of runners, but as you can see with this being a Kodobu kit kit, we kind of typically have some of these smaller bags with just like these little tiny runners and stuff in there. And then we've got our manual here with the really cool effect there for the Monowai. So this does have like a Monowai head in there, which is gonna be a little bit hard to see in this illustration, but it's just got the one sensor there. So it's also, it's a cool look for the eye for this, gives a sort of Xeon feel, of course, anything with the Monowai on it. So it's sort of like a Neo Xeon, obviously this would be something much later in Xeon if you were comparing it to something like that. But you got some more information about it all here in Japanese and just the illustration for that which does look pretty cool there. Also on the back side, you've got the line art there. So if you want to scan that, you can pop that into Photoshop and try out some custom color schemes on that. Always nice to have some good line art. And the color guide is up here at the top. Again, it's all in Japanese, but you've got that there if you wanted to give that a quick translation. It's pretty much gray, white, dark gray, and then a couple of little tiny little parts of color around basically, I think like for like the camera bits there. And that's pretty much it really. On the inside here, we've got a bunch more about the backstory of this. So a lot of these frame arm kits, they do have a sort of story to them, but again, it's all in Japanese. So I'm sure there's probably a source online where you can go and you can see like the translated uh, text of that if you're interested. Then we got some more uh, information over here just about the equipment, uh, of course the shield, the long, long like cannon rifle thing and all that. So we just got some more information there. But again, all in Japanese, so let's just go over here to the parts list. That's gonna be up here at the front of the manual. We've got all of that, and the parts that are unused are just grayed out here. So it really only shows us a couple of parts as being unused, but it doesn't uh, do that for parts that are just optional. So there will be more parts than that that you will ultimately not really be able to use as just uh, option parts. And it looks like here in the manual, it'll show you how to build like just the base body first, and then you can choose which version you want it to make of this, and so that's pretty cool. It shows you very clearly how to do that, it seems like. So it's just all going through the construction then, and everything, and then at the back of the manual where you would hope there'd be a section about markings, you find that there's not, because this kit actually, unfortunately, does not come with any water slide decals or any markings of any kind. Now, I do find that a little bit disappointing, especially for one like this, which is 
a more sort of like, it's not like a super robot, kind of like some of the other ones are a little bit more like super robot style. This one is more sort of like a grunge sort of style design. So some cool markings for this really would have been nice. So it's unfortunate that those weren't included. But alright, so first up we will have some polycaps here. PCA for just nine of this same PCA uh, polycap there. And then runner A here is the Frame Arms Architect Frame uh, R version. This is the renewal version of the frame, so you will have the new uh, version of the frame included with this. So here's runner A. And then runner B as well is the rest of those parts for the arms and legs. So we've got two of this B runner. So all of these parts just make up the Architect Frame, and it's kind of in like a dark gray. It almost sort of looks somewhat metallic, sort of. I don't think maybe necessarily, maybe it's just kind of shiny, but it's in just a dark gray kind of color. And then the actual runner A, specifically for this kit here, is for the GDAO slash RayDAO, which was the other version of that. And I think these are some new parts maybe added there at the bottom for this particular kit. Anyway, this was originally from 2016 when that uh, previous original version first came out. And the same thing here for runner B as well in this light gray kind of color there. And then runner C as well, some more parts here probably for the arms and the legs as we've got two of this C runner. Runner D, one little small runner here of some white parts. And some more white parts here on the E runner as well. We've got two of this E runner. The F runner is just one little part here in like a black kind of color. I guess maybe it's sort of like a, just a super dark gray, but it's kind of maybe meant to look black. Anyway, you got the same color here for runner G as well, just a few parts there. And then runner H also, which as you can see is going to be some rifle parts on here. And then some more of that same color parts here on the I runner, and we've got two of this I runner. And then we're skipping all the way to runner O for some parts here, which I can assume are just new parts specifically for this kit. It looks like maybe, and this is just back to the light gray color. And runner P as well, some more new parts. We've got two of this P runner with some very sharp long blades on there. Be careful for that. Runner Q here, some more new parts in white. Runner R here is back to that dark gray color for now the new parts for the long uh, cannon rifle uh, weapon that you've got on there. And then runner S is our blade effect parts for that, which you've got in just plain clear and also clear green. So it's cool that you got some what looks to be just options for that if you wanted to choose it to be clear green as it's sort of meant to be as it's shown on the box. Or if you wanted to paint a different color, you just got them in plain clear and you can just paint them in like clear orange, clear purple, whatever you want. So that's cool. And the last but certainly not least is the frame arms hands. This is the V runner and just all of our hand option parts for this. So it's going to be closed fist, open hands, and holding hands all here on the V runner. So like I said, there's uh, quite a lot of empty space here in the box. So that is uh, always just feels a little bit disappointing, but there should be a lot of kit to enjoy once we've got it all built up. So I'm going to build this and I think it's going to be pretty awesome. So let's see how it comes together. All right guys, so here it is all built up and I gotta say it looks awesome. This was a lot of fun to build and it's always fun to build frame arms kits because it's nice to switch over from Gunpla to building something a little bit different. Uh, but this one was really cool. You got a lot of nice parts on there. The design is really cool. And again, I'll just say that I think this is one that I think is gonna be very appealing to a lot of people who maybe never tried frame arms before and maybe interested in trying one but they couldn't quite find one that they quite like. I think this one's gonna be one that has a lot of appeal for Gunpla fans. And after building out and realizing it definitely has a a lot more kind of design similarities to or it looks like something that could be out of like Gundam 00 sort of like an enemy mobile suit from 00 something like that it has some sort of similarities but it's a really awesome kit so I'm really excited to share this with you guys as always thank you so much to USA Gundam store for making that possible if you guys want to check out some different frame arm stuff and everything else on the site the link to USA Gundam store is there down below so check that out and use my coupon code there if you want to save 10% off everything on the site there as well so as mentioned for our hand parts, you've just got the closed fist options there, as well as your open hands, which do look very nice and they're all nicely detailed. And then you're just weapon holding hands. So there's no like trigger finger hand, it's just these weapon holding hands which you'll use for just kind of everything. Some kits do come with specific hands for their weapons. This one does not, just the standard hands for this one. And a beam rifle here with a little white part there for the sort of camera, I guess, on that. Nothing moves on this, it's just kind of just a couple pieces all put together to make a pretty simple rifle. So you will have some seam lines on here and that should be expected. With these frame arms kits, they do tend to be a little bit more seam line heavy than your standard Gunpla stuff. And then our massive cannon here, which is coming in at, let's see, about 19 centimeters in length in its collapsed form, but then when you expand that out, that's gonna bring it out to about 21 and a half centimeters at full length. Now this thing is pretty awesome. The forward handle will move up and down like that. The back handle will move up and down like that. So you can do a two-handed grip on this, holding it like uh, this 
basically. And so this one as well is relatively simple in terms of its parts count. You will have seam lines down this one as well, but simple, but very cool looking weapon here. And then we've got some option parts for turning this into the regular G Dao. First thing you need to do is just remove these parts here off the side as it doesn't use those. And on the head here, you need to remove this part on the top and replace that with this part here. So the head's looking a little bit more grunt, like a little bit less, uh, lower profile than having these big fins sticking off the top of there. And we'll also replace the chest piece here by just removing that, not all of that actually. There we go, just removing this front part here and replacing that again with one that's a little bit more low profile, just kind of flat chest sort of looking bit like that. Not really a big fan of this design of the g I definitely like the new version of that for here for the uh, Special Forces version. But then also with this you do also have the shield which you can use as well and it just it indicates to use this specifically with this version of the g-dial not with the special forces version i think probably also because the big parts attached onto the side of the shoulders would be kind of getting in the way of using this shield uh, you can attempt to use it with the special forces version as well if you want but that just attaches onto the side of the arm like that and once so while I said I definitely prefer the Special Forces version of the G-Dial, here is what it looks like just in gray. If any of you guys wanted to get the kit to make just a gray version of the G-Dial here, it does look pretty cool. And I could definitely see it being a really cool thing to get maybe two or three of this kit. While it would be pretty expensive, that you could put together a team of them where you have like slightly different versions that you could make. And it would look pretty interesting to have just a small team of these, you know, all each one looking slightly different with the equipment or just how you wanted to have the different armor parts on them and stuff. So. Let's just go ahead and get this changed back to the Special Forces version. Well, let's go over some of the articulation here a little bit real quick, and I'll also just point out that yes, this is missing quite a few different color apps, like the tips of the wings are supposed to be white, uh, the ends of the antennas there are supposed to be in dark gray, it's supposed to have little green bits here under the chest, so you will have some colors to fill in if you aren't planning on painting the full kit, of course. And then like I said, seams. You got some around here and there, like the two halves of this gray section here, you'll have a seam down the side of there. This like fin here on the back of the leg, you'll have a seam down the middle of that. This part here, you'll have a seam down the middle of this part there on like the backpack. Probably the most egregious though is these white parts here in the center of this knee section. You can see this, that seam line right down the middle of that. That definitely should have been a separate piece, so a little bit disappointed with that one. Uh, code book, yeah. All right, let's talk about some of the articulation then. The head will not go up very far because it's kind of blocked by the backpack part there. You can remove that and you just uh, have a hard point here on the back and then on the back of the tailbone there as well. Without that, the head will go up maybe slightly farther, but still not all that much. Really cool head design on this though. I like the little vents underneath the head there. Uh, and then the head will go down to there. So not a whole bunch. Basically, it's just on a ball joint there. As for this kind of backpack part here that you have plugged onto the back, these little mini wings on the side, those will move a little bit up and down there. That's pretty much it. In the stomach section, we do have some ab crunch here, which is pretty nice, but it does tend to be a weak point for these kits. If you move it around too much, it's going to get kind of weak and posing the kit might become a little bit of an issue if you just have this getting a little bit too floppy there in the midsection. It does tend to happen with these frame arms kits. So just be ready to tighten up that joint there if it starts to get a little bit loose on you, not a big deal. And then rotation here at the center of the waist there as well, of course. The arms will move up and then this shoulder part is starting to get in the way of his face, but you can move that by just uh, moving this a little bit on its own separately out there so that you can get the arms up a little bit farther before stuff is crashing into each other too much. Obviously this part here will just rotate there where it's attached onto the side of the shoulder. And the shoulder joint will swing forward and back a little bit there as well too as that's just kind of attached on there via a ball joint into the main torso skeleton there as well. The arm will rotate there at the top. You've got a double joint here which is kind of hard to take advantage of because of the armor kind of getting in the way. So really you're only going to get about 90 degrees out of the elbow joint unfortunately. And the wrist also has a hinge here up and down and then if the hand is just plugged on there via peg so you can just rotate that there in place. We don't have any skirt armor to speak of, but back around here on the back of the legs, you have this little fin bit here, which will move up and down like that, which can get in the way when you're bending the leg. It's kind of getting in the way like that, but what you can do is just rotate that a little bit so it's kind of out to the side, and then when you bend your knee, you don't have to worry so much about that. Now, that does tend to be another weak point of these kits uh, where this part is plugged into here. I would definitely recommend gluing this part into the frame. On the past reviews, I'm sure I've mentioned this before, but this part just tends to be, because it's meant to be plugged into different uh, areas for different kits, this kit in particular, you need to plug it into the lower section. Just go ahead and glue that in, because this is all just part of this frame part here for the waist that's just gonna be stuck in there, so don't need to worry about that. Just glue that straight away. 
But as I was saying, you can get a pretty good knee bend there. You just need to move this part kind of out to the side to be out of the way of that. The legs themselves can come out pretty wide like that. So pretty nice joint there. And then forward, obviously you're not gonna have any issues with that with there not being any front skirt, anything like in the way of that. And nothing else really moves on the leg from there, except for, well, I'll just show you that this part here on the front, that part can be removed and you've got a bunch of hard points on here if you wanted to plug on some other different kind of armor or some other option piece here onto the front of the leg as well. You've got lots of options there for that. The ankle will rotate side to side there and also front all the way up to there, back to there. Don't lose that little piece off the end of there. No toe bend, unfortunately, as this is all just kind of connected, but it's kind of okay. Up underneath the feet, you've got a really like no detail under there. That's kind of disappointing. A little bit of detail, at least something I think would have been better than nothing, but it's pretty much just flat, no detail there, unfortunately. Another hard point here on the back of the ankles, though, if you wanted to plug something onto there, just point that out to you guys. Just to give you guys an idea of the size of these, frame arms kits usually tend to be somewhere in between uh, like 144 and 100 scale Gumpla. So as you can see there next to the HG Gundam there, it's definitely going to be larger, not quite as big as something like a 100 scale master grade or something like that but somewhere right around in between there so as you can see while the articulation is a little bit of a mixed bag and it does have some seam lines on there some small missing color apps and everything like that all things considered i think still think that the design is so cool this kit is just going to look great despite those flaws you can still do plenty of cool action poses with this the weapons that you have included with here are in this are really cool the option parts give you a couple of different options to do at least for like the head and the chest and that part as well. And then of course there's loads and loads of different options that you could get into with all the different MSG option weapons and other frame arms kits and things that you can kit bash and all that. So there's loads of possibilities. But just for what you get in the box here, I think it's a great kit and definitely as it goes with frame arms kits, if you guys have never built any before, you, you should just know that they do tend to take a little bit more work, a little bit more love to get them really looking their best. I think out of the box this one does still look pretty great, but I think you know giving this a little bit more love by just at least doing some panel lining and some matte coat on this, add a couple decals and it could be looking great just even without fully painting the thing or just very minimal to no painting at all just panel lining and a nice matte top coat on that. It's gonna be looking really nice. But of course, painting it up uh, is going to make it really look its best, getting rid of all those seam lines. It's gonna take you a little while, but it's gonna look awesome, I think. So I'm looking forward to working on this one more in the future. But uh, again, check them out if you guys have never checked out any frame arms kits before. If you guys want recommendations, of course, feel free to ask. But this is definitely one that I think is a really great kit, and I can definitely see this one appealing to a lot of people who have never tried them before. But anyway, as always, guys, thank you so much for watching, and go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already before. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. And I'll see you guys next time. I hope you're having a great day. Goodbye.